mini Bitcoin miners just got a little less mini and a lot more powerful. <laughs> what is this? This is a small Bitcoin miner that truly has a chance to mine a Bitcoin block. You may have heard of the open source Bitax Bitcoin miner project that has not only open sourced the software, but also the hardware design so you can DIY stuff like this. What is this thing? How much Bitcoin does it mine? How much does it cost? How do you set it up and use it? I'm Drew Vosk, you're on the Voscoin YouTube channel. We're out here on the Voscoin mining farm where I mine Bitcoin with big miners. And also I just love tinkering with gadgets and little stuff like this. Today we are reviewing the Bitax Supra Hex and this is my first Hex Bitax miner. This thing is so powerful, it is so small. Wi-Fi capabilities, power connection right there and oh my gosh look at this heat sink that's that silver piece if you don't know that thing is big we are out here in the boss coin diy data center the hard drive mining shed or simply the green shed on the Voscoin farm. We've got an air-cooled Bitcoin mining pod, we have a gray liquid cooling immersion shed, and then we have this that is completely HVAC, closed environment, nice and warm in the winter, nice and cool in the summer, very clean. And this is where I'm deploying stuff like this, because having a couple of these in your room and office is sweet, but at some point I started ending up with a whole army of mini miners, and I still have some hard drive miners, at least the ones that work, running in here. This is the masterpiece created by Tiny Chip Hub. We were so impressed with the work that Tiny Chip Hub is doing on the bid axis. We opened an affiliate account. We have a direct link in the video description below to buy their stuff, support the channel, and a bunch of other links and coupon codes like code Voscoin to save you some coin. They're not a reseller, they're a manufacturer as emphasized by their name being on their board. Peeking out down there next to the Bitax Hex. So yes, this is basically a giant version of these other Bitaxes. There's three key Bitax generations you need to know about. The Ultra, the Supra, and the Gamma. The Ultra uses the BM1366 ASIC chip. That's the Bitcoin S19 XP miner chip. The Supra uses the BM1368 ASIC chip from the S21. And then the Bitax Gamma uses the BM1370 ASIC chip from the S21 Pro as well as the S21 XP. All of those are Bitmain ant miners. That's how all of these have great to best in class efficiency. There's different manufacturers and resellers for all this stuff. Make sure you choose a good one because not all bid axes are built the same. You may think you're saving a couple bucks. They may be using used chips and other cheaper components like a cheaper heatsink that may not give you a long lifespan with your hardware. At a glance, this thing is a monolithic compared to a normal bid axe. Let me try to give you some perspective there. It's not quite the same, it's in the front of the scene, but another good comparison here is going to be that this thing is basically the size of a Canon Nano 3 miner, similar in sizing to the Brains Mini miner, and the controversial Bitax ripoff Lucky miner. Yeah, I've got a whole playlist on these mini Bitcoin miners. Check it out. I won't drone on and on about them. Let's stay focused here on the Super Hex. There are six ASIC chips in this miner. That's crazy. 4.2 terahash a second or more of Bitcoin mining power. Upgraded fans capable of achieving RPMs of five freaking thousand. No, it's not over 9,000 yet, so we can't use the DBZ meme. This will consume a whopping 90 watts, which really isn't that much at all. That's actually less than the Canon miner uses while this Bitax Super Hex achieves a higher hash rate, which means more efficiency, which means you will have more Bitcoin mining power for less energy expenditure. There's torque jam nuts used on this. A transient voltage suppressor or TVS diodes are installed to improve the stability and the power regulation. And there's even 
seven channels of temperature monitors installed and there is a critical note there is pre-installed firmware by their team they highly recommend using their firmware if you upgrade it like we talked about in our last bidax gamma review well good luck something a bit custom like this unless you are an expert user i would just follow what they're saying enough talk let's plug it in let's set it up right here these come with a power supply this is a yu 1210 power supply key things we're looking for here the output on this is 12 voltage 1.6 amp rated 100 to 240 voltage so this can be plugged into any power source essentially so all right plugged it in fired up that's what you want to see put my ears close it's not completely silent but it's very quiet i plugged it into my apc power adapter so this is just typical 120 voltage here in the us every time you plug in a bit axe it's going to generate a wi-fi uh, network so mine's bit axe b5 fd here i'm going to click that on my phone once i do that it's going to pull up apple captive I'm gonna click the top left, three lines. I'm gonna to go to network. I'm gonna to go to my uh, Wi-Fi SSD. And I'm out here at orbital command. Orbital command, is my Wi-Fi network. Then I put in my password and I click save. And you're gonna have a hard time seeing it. Uh, but once you save it, well, going to tell you that you need to restart uh, I'm gonna click restart and then it's gonna restart the device and look at this shot of the screen this shows it hashing it didn't have this hash rate screen before that means that it has successfully accepted your Wi-Fi uh, credentials there in the spirit of don't try this at home I pulled the power out taking the screen cover off and then I'm going to reinstall it. Ooh, be careful. Oh, oh, f Woo, there we go. Still got my finger. Oh yeah, don't do this at home. <laughs> God damn it, man. Last week, a power supply blew up off camera. S21 Pro. Ah, oh, this week, almost chunked my finger. Okay, I was literally saying, be careful when you do this because your finger drifts right there inside the fan. Okay, here we go, let's do this. Here we go! <laughs> All right, so I have a Wi-Fi mesh network. I found my new device that pops up as my, my latest device. I put a custom, custom name on it here, right? I just call it my BitX Super Hex, TCH. I get the IP address, and then I've got my laptop out here, so I just, jump on my laptop, it makes all of this so much easier. And you can already see we're, we're hashing, uh, but I only put in the Wi-Fi network, right? So uh, I'm not mining to my address currently. Uh, so one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip the screen and I'm gonna click save on that. With the way I have this set up right now, the screen's upside down. Maybe I need to restart it for those changes to take effect. So now I am going to jump into one of my other bit axes and I am going to update the mining pool information. And I'll throw this um, up here on screen for you. I'm gonna solo mine on CK pool with this. I'm gonna use public pool as my backup pool. So now all this information has been updated. I click save, I click restart and let's see if those changes uh, take effect. Bitcoin runs on hash rate, and this video runs on the hash rate index. But what is the hash rate index? It's a product of the Luxor team, if you're familiar with them, providing metrics and research on the Bitcoin network and Bitcoin mining industry, from ASIC miners to mining pools and mining tools. I didn't write that. I, I like the way that sounded. Check them out with the link out in the video description below. They've got all that and a very insightful newsletter. So over the last month, we launched Solo Luck, which I'm so proud of. 
team killed it on this one. We've been working really hard on it. It's a Bitcoin solo mining calculator. Uh, and we try to make it sweet, some useful information, bunch of stuff on here. You can see detailed block data if you want to nerd out or time for the next halving, all kinds of good data. And then uh, we have basic resources on how to source the best miners for this. Uh, and I'm building a more elaborate options for that. So I put in 1.1 terahash a second, uh, and that's a bit X gamma, not the super hex we're looking at. But let's get this into perspective. So the bit X gamma, depending on your configuration, let's just call it 300 bucks. And let's talk price, right? The Bidax Super Hex, which the screen has flipped over since we're starting, nice. This is gonna cost a little bit over $500. It's more expensive. There's no sugar coating that. But let's compare the hash rate difference depending on your budget and your goals here, right? So for around $300, you can get the Bidax Gamma. Phenomenal, open source, many DIY Bitcoin miner, all that stuff, and you can DIY it or not. That's the cool part. Or we take the Bidax Super Hex, which should be doing about 2.2, terahash a second. Look how much these odds change, updating in real time, right? So you basically have a one in five million chance to hit a Bitcoin block every day with the Bidax Gamma, or one in 13,000 per year. With the Bidax Super Hex, your odds go up to one in 1.3 million per day, or one in 3,562 over the next year. Yes, let's just call it twice as expensive. But your odds to actually mine a Bitcoin block increase exponentially. Remember, this is solo mining. I don't think any of these mini Bitcoin miners make sense for pool mining. They don't make that much day to day in a big Bitcoin mining pool. Mining pool fees, withdrawals, transaction fees, all that stuff. It'll eat up the mining profits for a small miner. If you want to use a mining pool, you need to get a big miner like the Bitmain Ant Miner S21 XP that we recently reviewed on the channel and deployed out here on the farm, among other Bitcoin mining rigs. But when it comes to solo mining, to plug this in and I've got a one in 3,562 chance to mine a Bitcoin block, which means that I, if I hit the last block, I would have earned $334,000, over a quarter million dollars, or more importantly, over three Bitcoin that I would happily bank and hold on to long term. These mini Bitcoin miners decentralize the network, and it's an incredible thing. One way to look at them is basically like a lottery miner. These have a chance to mine a Bitcoin block. No, you don't earn anything day to day. No, it's not guaranteed. I'm not here to show this or mislead you, but this is the best thing to happen to Bitcoin mining since it began. You understand this is the closest thing to get back to one CPU, one vote. If you aren't just absolutely enthralled with this open source Bitcoin mining initiative, you just don't understand it. And that's fine. You'll get it eventually or you'll stay ignorant for life. But the bottom line is this is so cool and I'm having a blast using these, checking them out, plugging them in. Uh, would I build an army of mini Bitcoin miners? No, that doesn't make sense. Just buy a full-size Bitcoin miner like the S21 or preferably like the M60S, a better machine in my experience out here on my actual Bitcoin mining farm. But to buy one, two, three of these different models, whatever you want for whatever reason. Okay, now that, that's cool, that's making sense. This is the kind of stuff I wanna see in every house. This is what makes Bitcoin anti-fragile. This is what makes Bitcoin incredible. The reason that Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies, especially meme coins, are trash is because they're not proof of work. They're not mineable. Their network isn't hard at all. It's literally just at AWS, okay? You shut down AWS, you'd shut down all these shitcoin tokens. The distribution through proof of work, basically like open sourcing your distribution of money, right? So you plug this stuff in, you start mining coins and that's how it's always been with Bitcoin. There's no crowd sale. There's no insiders. I mean, there's people who are early. Yeah, sure. I mean, what, what can we do about that? A lot of people are screaming Bitcoin's awesome for a decade. That's how long it took for the above average person to wake up. Let that sink in. My initial impressions are I am absolutely impressed with this device. And dollar for dollar, it is increasing your money per hash rate. No, not the same of a full size Bitcoin miner, but it also doesn't cost thousands of dollars. Do I like this more than a Bitax Gamma? Not necessarily. 
there's something incredible just about how sweet and small these are. And Tiny Chip Hub, by the way, remember, they make Bidax Gammas. You don't need the Super Hex. That's just their key unique product, which is what made me take notice of them. Popping over here to the mining pool, you can see all my different workers, and you can see that my Bidax Super Hex is already here. It's already showing online. Uh, it's already been picked up by the pool. I've had a good experience on CK Pool. Jump inside the dashboard. This is the data we get. It's, report, it's reportedly drawing 106 watts, 4.3 terahash a second in real time. Let's see what data we get here on the screen. Basically 4.2 terahash a second, 25 joules of a terahash, which is the same as watts terahash, 52 C Celsius, IP address, mining pool information. It's just gonna regurgitate what you would get from the dashboard. But it's interesting to get that at a glance without having to be logged in to anything. 550 megahertz for ASIC chip frequency. Looking good. Power supply, getting a little toasty, but it's just warm. In its current setup and configuration, I would consider this a silent miner. It has a, a audible sound with your ear next to it. Be careful with that. Uh, but yeah, it's quiet and it's quieter than many of these other uh, mini Bitcoin miners. Surprisingly, it doesn't put off much heat. And I think that is a testament to this design. There's a lot of cooling going on here. Those are two big fans with a massive heat sink and a setup that's not being overclocked currently and just pushed beyond its limit. Uh, for example, the, the Canon Mini Miners, they put off a lot of heat and they, they pitch it as a feature, right? Whereas you take like the Brains Mini Miner, it doesn't put off too much heat and they don't talk too much about it being a desk heater and all of that. It's interesting the way things can be framed and kind of try to set up as marketing. It's not a, it's not a bug, bro, it's a feature. It's interesting aesthetically. Personally, I would like fan shrouds. Uh, that's just me. And I'd replace all the red on this uh, with blue just to match that blue PCB. I would also love to sub the fans on here with Noctua fans. I just love the way they look. I used to hate them and then I don't know what happened. Maybe I just aged and I love them. It, the the Noctua is so ugly. It's so ugly. And there is my Noctua edition screwdriver. I love that thing. It's actually really nice. I have these little mini monitors. I love if there was an easy way to just plug in uh, like an HDMI to this. Does anyone know how I could basically get the information that's going to this little screen and just get that pushed onto um, these little mini monitors I have? That, that would be fun. I really want to nerd out and make this like my nerdy mining man cave. And it would be sweet to just throw a huge monitor up on the wall. I'm not sure where. And uh, just have that monitor like read my mining pool information I got in real time. And then imagine I walk in here one day and I see that a block was mined. That would be crazy. This is sweet. I, I really like this. I think I've gone over everything I can think of and say in this video. Uh, I think this thing, you know, out of the box, so, you know, so far seems good to go. And if it doesn't perform as expected, I'll definitely let you know. And if it, you know, breaks in a couple months or something, I'll post an update video here on the Boss Coin YouTube channel. So I hope you like the content. I hope you subscribe. And uh, <laughs> that's crazy. So the AC just kicked on, right? And but it's like 27 degrees outside and we're running the AC in here. Good thing we spec this to be an Arctic level unit. Uh, so, hey, again, I'm Boss. Subscribe if you like the content. Uh, this is our CMO, Tails, our Chief Mining Officer here at Bosscoin. We're 10 seconds on every video because of course we do. Hope you're having a good one. Good luck and goodbye.